WHAS 11 Storm Team, meteorologist Chuck Taylor, Ken Schultz, and Ashley Chisholm. The WHAS 11 Storm Team. Well, this doesn't happen very often, Chuck, but I have a personal interest in this forecast tonight. We are to do a live television show on the Balloon Globe from the fairgrounds at 9 o'clock. Now, it's from an uncovered area. All right, take and, a look, uh, Gary. What does it look like? Take well, a look. It looks like rain, huh? <laughs> it sure does. We've had a little break, but when you take a look at next red, you know the wet weather's coming back. That rain is already pushing back into parts of Hardin County and just moving into Bullitt County now, so the showers will be returning here in Louisville very soon. And here's the forecast for tonight for the big balloon glow. It looks like showers, maybe even a thunder shower around with temperatures in the 50s. A little on the cool side then. Tomorrow for the great balloon race itself, wet weather with thunderstorms and temperatures in the 60s. Well, we're seeing one large area of rain over us right now, but here comes the problem for tomorrow. A lot of heavy rain moving up from Texas into Oklahoma, already spilling into the southwest corner of Missouri. That will be here, giving us some real problems during the day tomorrow. Now, some areas have already seen some flooding. Just take a look at some of these rain amounts. The most rain reported has been up in Carrollton. Josh Grimes has had four and a quarter inches of rain with some flash flooding up there. Brian Seymour, not too bad with 85 hundredths of an inch. And down in Hardensburg, they've had about eight tenths of an inch of rain. Well, here in Louisville, we're seeing a little sun right now, but don't let that fool you. Our current temperature is a cool 59. The humidity is 83%. The cold front moved through. Now we have northerly winds at 13 and the barometer 30.24 and falling. Our high today, 73. The low, 55. And we've seen 61 hundredths of an inch of rainfall since midnight. Our total for the month, 3.82 inches. There's the frontal system. It moved through, but there is rain on both sides of the front. The front is already stalling out down in Texas, and that's where the next storm system will be forming down over Texas because at higher levels winds are coming up from the southwest that storm will get organized overnight tonight and then be over southern sections of Missouri during the day tomorrow that means a good soaking throughout the Ohio Valley throughout the entire region for all the events tomorrow pretty heavy rain, but there is some good news. This thing should move out of here on Sunday, and after that it will be clearing up. So, for tonight, rain will be returning, and we could see a few thunderstorms. The overnight low will be near 50. Tomorrow, a wet day. The rain will be heavy. The thunderstorms will be heavy. Our high will be near 68. Tomorrow night, a few showers. The overnight low near 50. On Sunday, we should see some clearing by midday with a high of 63. Monday will be a great day with a high of 64. And on Tuesday, maybe a shower before the day is over with a high temperature of 68. So I know you're going to pack your umbrella and probably need a raincoat tonight and uh, certainly no hope for that balloon race tomorrow. Good luck. While I have you here, what about the temperature <laughs> for the mini marathon tomorrow morning about 8 o'clock? Okay, temperatures probably in the very low 50s. Okay. I guess you runners like temperatures like that. Yeah, cool temperatures are good. The rain can be a little annoying yeah, at times, sure. but we'll make it. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Well, we're having to put up with the heavy rain and lightning here in Kentucky, but let's be thankful that we don't have to put up with this. Look at this snow, up to nine inches of snow in southern Minnesota that folks are trying to dig out from under. Numerous accidents were reported yesterday. Snow and ice made driving extremely hazardous, as you can imagine. At least one person was killed. The National Weather Service says snowstorms in Minnesota this late in April are very rare. Well, everyone is still keeping their fingers crossed that the weather will cooperate somewhat for tonight's balloon glow. We'll be bringing you live coverage of that event no matter what happens. These are pictures from last year's balloon glow. Only a couple of balloons lit up the sky on that night and morning. Well, this year, for the first time, the glow is an official derby event. Even if it rains, the glow will be a go. So, if you don't want to get wet, just tune in to WHAS-TV. Our live coverage of the balloon glow begins tonight at 9 o'clock. Well, there's still more to come from your news channel tonight. A Michigan jury continues to deliberate the fate of the suicide doctor. And in my medical notes, I'll tell you about a hormone that may act as a sleep aid next. Tonight at 6. It may be eight days until the biggest two minutes in sports, but racing begins tomorrow at Churchill Downs. We'll take you to the track for a preview of this season's big opening. Tonight at 6 on WHAS 11. I'm Rachel Platt. And I'm Barry Burnson. For the top of the morning's news. And the storm team weather forecast. And traffic reports you can't get anywhere else. Oh, sorry, I'm just cleaning up a little bit. What, no one told you? Told us what? what? See Terry Miners with Rachel and Barry two times a week. Coffee donuts? Good morning, Kentuckiana on WHAS 11.
For an uplifting, colorful experience, don't miss the breathtaking views of hot air balloons as they light up the night sky. Watch Balloon Glow, live tonight at 9, only on Kentuckiana's news channel, WHAS 11. The Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes, all three showcase the world's greatest athletes, thoroughbred racehorses. Who's behind their drive and passion to be a winner? ABC Sports' Jim McKay hosts the Challenge of the Triple Crown, Wednesday at 7.30 on WHAS 11. If you have a hillside that is too steep to mow, our weekend gardener Fred Wishy has a solution for you. At least it's something that's worked for one family in Starlight, Indiana. When it comes to color in a garden, I have long said the weekend gardener's flower is the daylily because the daylily is so easy to grow. It requires very little care, no diseases, no insects, but now I think I have found one that's even better than that here in Elaine Stiller's garden. Elaine, this is one of the biggest colorful areas of creeping flocks I've ever seen. How old is this? Oh, it's about 10 years old. The biggest part of it is. And what made you start this? When we moved here, we had this big bank here to cut, and my husband was riding on it with the lawnmower, and he was scaring me to death. So I decided I was going to start the flocks coming across the hill. Every year, I'd start a little bit more until I would cover this bank so I didn't have to worry about him. While fall is the best time to plant creeping flocks, they can be planted now, but remember to water regularly until they get established. Elaine says when the flowering period is over, this hillside looks just like a lawn, but it never needs cutting and there are no weeds. And are these plants tough? Well, last January, this hillside, she said, was used as a toboggan course. And look at it, no sign of damage anywhere. Well, as you heard Elaine say, there isn't anything as carefree as creeping flocks. And if you're looking for something new in creeping flocks, how about this? I hadn't seen this one before. It's called candy stripe. If you plant it, remember what Elaine said, just make sure that you water it well and keep it watered almost daily until it becomes established. For the Kentuckiana News Channel, WHS 11, I'm Fred Wishy, the Weekend Gardener. And there is still much more news ahead. Melissa Swan joins us now live from the newsroom with a look at the stories that are coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Melissa? Hello, Gary. Good evening, everyone. Coming up tonight on the News at 6, we'll show you why the rain will not put a damper on a big day for Churchill Downs. They're gearing up for opening day at the track. We'll show you the finishing touches and all the food being prepared for Dawn at the Downs. Mark Hebert tracks down your tax dollars. Why is so much of your money leaving Jefferson County and never coming back? Plus, the family of Louisville native Muhammad Ali deals with some sad news. Stay with us for more news just ahead at 6 o'clock. All right, Melissa, see you in a moment. Now, tonight you called us about the proposed bridge for Jefferson County and where you believe it should go. But first tonight, your thoughts on proposed cutbacks at TARC. Here is Kentuckiana Call-In. Why should the public have to pay for the mismanagement of the board of directors of TARC? Let's let them pay. Let's let them take a salary cut. Let's make the past board members who have abused the system and the money reimburse TARC. How shallow-minded can Mayor Abramson be? It's obvious that the eastern corridor of Jefferson County is the best place for a bridge. The traffic will be diverted, and we, if we build the bridge downtown, we'll have nothing but a, just more of a spaghetti junction. All right, call us anytime about any of the stories that you see here on the News Channel. Tell us what you think about the possible chickenpox vaccine that may come this summer. Our call-in line is 571-1101. It is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's our 530 report, but Melissa Swan joins me in just a moment for the 6 o'clock news. Stay with us. We'll be right back.